declare a particular var variable by giving it a name and a data type. And when we would assign it, we'd assign a single value to the var variable. Well, we can have an array variable that has been assigned multiple values. Okay, and I'll explain to you exactly how that works. So let's right click here and go to new class and I'm going to create a class since we're going to be learning about arrays in this lesson I'm going to call it learning arrays and you can really name your classes anything you want and then down here just select the first option that just allows us to execute this class so the way to declare a variable of course is just you, you give the data type and you give the variable name right let's say this is the variable name and uh, if I want to give it a uh, some data I just say values is equal to you know 100 but I cannot I cannot do something like this you know let's say I want to give 100 200 300 100 to this variable uh, this is of course illegal syntax I can only give one value to this okay and the reason for that is because this is a container for single elements okay this variable is pointing to a single data point which is 100 now if I want to store multiple things in this variable the way I would do that is using some array notation and uh, first things first we need to have these square brackets okay so now I'm saying that values is a variable of type integer array so on the other side of the equal sign we actually have to use some um, some new uh, syntax here okay this new keyword it'll make a lot more sense later on when we learn about object orientation but the idea is that at on this line we are doing two things we are declaring a variable of type integer array so an array is allows you to store multiple elements how many elements that's what is declared here Okay, we are initializing an array. We're initializing an array with a hundred slots. So this array will have the ability to store a hundred elements. It's very important to keep in mind that this is a fixed size. Once I, once this line is executed, this variable will uh, be capable of uh, referencing multiple elements, a hundred of them. Okay, hundred slots. So now I can give this variable some data. Let's say I want to give it the number uh, 1000. Okay, we have to specify the slot position in which this this number is going to go, and that slot position can be referenced using an index number. So let's say I want to put it in the slot number two. How many indexes do we have in this array? Well, we should have a hundred positions, right? So we should be able to reference a hundred numbers in here. The key to remember is that the first slot of an array starts with the zeroth index position. All right, the zeroth index position, and the last slot of the array is going to be uh, the size of it minus one. Ninety-nine. This is the last index position. Okay, so I'm assigning the first index position of the array uh, the value one thousand and in the 99th index position, uh, I am assigning this number, okay? So if you count from 0 to 99, what are you going to get? Well, you're going to get 100. 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to the number 99. That's 100 slots. So basically, think of this as an address, the slot address in which you're storing the data. So if you look at this picture here, Notice that it starts from the 0th index position and goes all the way up to the 99th index position. If you count each one of those slots, it's going to be 100 addresses, 100 slots. And the way to print the data, it's going to be very similar to what we've already seen. We could just print values at a given index position. Um, and let's say I want to uh, print something in the first index position one well this is actually officially going to be the second slot in the array because remember the first slot starts at the zeroth index position one is the second slot okay so let's hit run here 
and notice that the, the value in the second slot of the array is only zero, okay? And if I, for example, let's pick a random slot for 54, all right? 54 is of course less than uh, less than 99, so it's some slot in the middle. We haven't given it any data, so let's hit play and notice that it's zero. So this should show you that all slots that have not been assigned any data yet are by default initialized with zero, okay, with the number zero. So all of the slots in this values array, all of the slots uh, that do not have any values assigned are going to be containing the data zero, okay? So let's print, for example, the first index position, the zeroth slot. Here, I expect to see 1,000 printed. So let's hit play and notice that 1,000 is indeed being printed here. Um, and if I want to print uh, 99, the 99th slot is going to be the last slot of this array, and that should contain this data. So let's hit play here and notice that that's what is being printed. Now if I do 100, if I do 100, this index position, this address, this this particular slot number doesn't even exist in the array, all right? Very important to keep in mind. It starts from the zeroth index position all the way up to uh, the last slot, which is going to be less than what we have uh, allocated. 100 minus 1 is going to be 99. Because remember, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 99, if you count all those slots, it is in fact 100 slots. But you can't reference the 100th index position because it, it does not exist. Only up to 99 are the slots that exist. So let's hit play and notice it's giving us an error. It's saying Java Lang array index out of bounds exception. Okay, we have gone out of bounds. We've, we've gone past the slot index position uh, of the array, the last slot. The last slot was 99. We're referencing 100, and that's why it's saying index out of bounds 100 does not exist. This slot position does not exist in this array. Another thing to keep in mind is that you cannot assign slots with other data types. So for example, the slot position 1, right? this is going to be the second slot of this array. Uh, it has the address 1, right? that's the index position of that slot. Uh, I can't give it some other data type. I can't store this string in this slot. And the reason for that is, hover your mouse here, and it's saying type mismatch cannot convert from string to int. Because guess what? This is an integer array. It can only store integers. All right? So that is why we can't store any other data type. That's another key thing to keep in mind, that um, arrays contain the same kind of data. All right? And the, the kind of data that they should contain is, of course, based on the data type. Here we're saying that this array is of integer data type. So it's only going to take integers. We can't put any other data type in there, OK? I can't put, for example, 33.44. This is, from the previous lesson, you saw that this is a double. And uh, we can't store doubles here either, because guess what? This is an integer data type. If I change this to double, uh, now this is not showing an error. Uh, and of course, I have to change this side as well. Let's doubles basically accept this as well as you know basic uh, uh, whole numbers like this. So let's hit play and notice that. Uh, well, I'm still referring to an index out of bounds. So let me go one back. Let's go to 99 here. That's the last slot of the array, and notice that it is printing it out. All right. And the reason why it has the dot zero here is because the double basically is for decimals. So these whole numbers are treated as decimals, and it just pads on a dot zero at the end, all right? Same thing for the zeroth index position. So let's hit play, and notice that it's showing 1,000.0. Now I know this is some hairy syntax right here. Uh, this is going to make a lot more sense later on. Uh, but look at the variable. It's called values, and its type, its data type, is double array. That's the type. That's what this variable's type is. It's a double array. All right, it's capable of storing doubles in a uh, hundred slots. Okay, now let me show you another way to declare arrays. I can, let's let's create an array of type string. I can have a string array and we'll call it words. And I could do new string like that. But instead of given giving the number of slots, 
I could basically give the data directly and say my name is All right this words array contains three words my name is All right three strings so if I want to print one of these I would do sys out uh, words and then I give the index position of what I want printed. So here's a quiz for you. I want you to print me the last element, the last element in this words array, which is is. I want you to print that by referencing the right, the correct index position. Take a moment to try this out on your own, and uh, you can resume to watch my solution. All right, uh, hopefully you were able to figure this out. The length of this array, the size of this array is three. Okay, but when it comes to index positions, when it comes to the address of each one of these slots, we are basically one less than the than the than what it looks. So this first slot, its index position is zero. All right, uh, like I explained to you earlier, uh, the second slot right here, this index position is one. This last slot right here, its index position is two. So if I wanted to print is, I would have to put two like that. And now it's going to print is. So let's hit play and notice that it's printing is. Uh, if I wanted to print the first element, then I would do zero. And that's going to print my. All right. So this is an array of size three. Okay. So if I wanted to, instead of giving these values, I could basically put these elements in this array later by first initializing a size of three. All right. This initializes the array with three empty slots and now in each one of these slots I can put in the data by saying uh, you know at the zeroth index position I want to put the word my at the first index position uh, excuse me second index position which is going to be uh, referenced by the number one right um, that's gonna say name and the third index position, which is going to be referenced by the index number two, right? Think of these as addresses, the zeroth slot, the index one slot, and the index two slot. These are addresses. And the last word here is going to be is, okay? So this is essentially doing the same exact thing as what I showed you on this first line. So let's hit play and notice that it's, it's still working as expected. So take a few moments to internalize this uh, syntax. It's a little new uh, from what we've seen so far. So uh, this is the key here when we want to uh, create a new array, right? When we define, when th this is the declaration, right? This is the declaration of an array called values. That's the variable name. And we're, we're saying that this is going to contain data type of double uh, arrays, right? It's a double array. And here we give the number of slots that this array is going to contain. The number of slots means 100 slots. The first index position starts from 0 all the way up to the 100 minus 1, which is the 99th index position. Same goes for here. I'm declaring uh, a variable called words. It's of type string array. All right, so it's going to store multiple strings. And how many strings are going to store? It's going to store three strings. All right, that's the number of slots. And uh, these are fixed size data structures. Once I declare this array, I can't change the number of slots. All right, I'd have to initialize a new array uh, to to do that. Okay, so I can't I can't say that. All right, I've filled up this array. Let me try to let me increase the size of this and um, put in the 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 fourth element here. It's not allowed. All right, once I initialize this array, I can't expand it or reduce its size. I would have to create a brand new array. And the way we could do that is just do words equals new string. And now words variable. What is its type? Its type is string array. But now this uh, variable is going to point to 10 slots. At this point, at this point, do you think words has any of the data that it had before? Well, take a guess. We're creating a brand new set of slots here. It's, of course, not going to have the data. Let me prove it to you. If I do sys out here, 
and do words at the zeroth index position, right? Uh, this is actually going to contain nothing, all right? It's, it might say null here. So let's hit play and notice um, the 1000 dot that's being printed from this statement right here, the my that's being printed from this statement right here, and then after this line, we are assigning 10 brand new slots to this variable, okay? The old data is gone at this point. The old data is gone from this uh, variable. And now the zeroth index position no longer, it no longer has my, it just has this, this keyword called null. And null basically means empty, right? Nothing, it means null. So any one of these slots, you know, zero, there's nothing in the second, in the slot position two, which is a third slot of the array, that's of course also going to just contain null. There's nothing there. So take some time to study this and uh, only then resume to the next lesson. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.